Hi, I'm Ben. I'm going to talk to you about blood clots. I've had both the superficial SVT and the deep vein DVT. DVTs are very, very serious. They will present a life-changing pattern for you, so you need to really fear them. Very quickly, you can have superficial vein clots anywhere in your leg. The main vein that gets attacked is usually the saphenous vein, which runs from up near your inguinal ligament down across to the knee, down towards the ankle, or over here from the inguinal area down towards the ankle. Last year I had uh, blood clots in most of that entire 30 inches of uh, saphenous vein. Now saphenous vein clots are your most common, but they're not, uh, they're, they're not too debilitating. You need to be, uh, you need to take them seriously because you can have a situation and part of that clot breaks off and goes into a deep vein and causes uh, deep vein clotting. So as soon as you suspect anything, and here's what you should look for, look for redness in a particular area. With me, my main clot formed around the knee. I had redness. I had burning. Now this didn't occur until probably six hours after the incident that, it, that created the blood clot, which was, uh, I was doing inline skating and my skate crashed into an immovable object, let's say. Now, once you discover you've got burning and you're wondering, well, could it be a clot? Could it? You, you really won't have any other indicators until you go to the hospital or your doctor and you have a Doppler test and they confirm that you do, in fact, have a blood clot, at which time they're going to put you on uh, Coumadin or Warfarin. And by the way, even though your doctors are going to tell you they're the same, Coumadin, for me, was, was much better. I, I know why. I think I know why, but I don't want to go into that. Uh, the other thing is that you'll have probably uh, a week or 10 days of Lovenox injections that you'll give yourself and a little needle that you'll inject around your stomach area. And that's going to help ensure you don't have uh, clotting problems. Okay, let's move on to the uh, deep vein clots. Now, the deep vein clots can occur anywhere, but we're going to confine ourselves to below the waist. They can occur in the calf or they can occur above the knee towards the waist. If they occur in the calf, the thing to look for is when you dorsiflex your foot, that means flexing the, the toes back towards the knee. If you have a clot in that calf, you're going to come right out of your chair. There won't be any doubt about it. Okay, what about clots from the knee up? Well, there typically you'll find that uh, we're dealing with the femoral vein. Now, you have, a, you have an inguinal ligament that kind of runs uh, contralaterally where your leg is uh, hinged. You have the femoral vein, femoral nerves, femoral artery, it runs under that. What I've discovered with a lot of people that have had femoral clots, they trace the origin back to some sort of uh, mechanical irritation that was caused by that ligament. So you've got to pay attention to what you're doing, whether you're doing uh, some sort of work in, around the house or you're stretching, doing things that involve stretching that ligament. Now, you may not even know that you're starting to have a deep vein clot. My first symptoms were sort of sporadic. They weren't well defined, but they seemed to indicate that I'd pulled in, uh, the uh, groin muscle. But the only problem was it wasn't consistent. The location kind of kept changing. Didn't think much of it. The next symptoms, which began maybe a couple, three weeks later, indicated that I was having some fluid building up in my leg when I would stand up. I couldn't understand it. It felt like fluid was building up in my leg, stopping at the knee. The next day, felt the same thing, and then I had extreme pain and extreme muscle weakness in the quads. Your quads will just almost be unable to carry you. I guess maybe six or eight hours after that, I began to have orthostatic hypotension. You'd feel real dizzy, like you were going to faint. And by the next morning, I had to call 911 and get the uh, EMT van and take me to the hospital. Now, when you're at the hospital, they're going to, uh, the first thing they always do is put an IV line in, into you and make sure you've got plenty of fluids. One of the things that may help precipitate clots is if you're dehydrated. So always do the pinch test, particularly in hot weather, to make sure you're not dehydrated. The other thing I want to caution you about is you may be trying to decide whether you have a pulled muscle or a blood clot, and so you may very cleverly, like I thought, well, I'll just take some nascent non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatories, 
and, uh, and we'll see if that eases it. The problem is that can make conditions a whole lot worse as it did for me because I was going into uh, dehydration and my kidneys were beginning to fail a little bit because of the dehydration and then I finished them off with uh, taking a whole bunch of NACIDs about 800 milligrams every four hours for a while to, just to see what it would do. So you don't want to take NACIDs. Uh, I'm told you can safely take Tylenol. Tylenol is okay if you want to try to evaluate your situation, use Tylenol. Okay, now you've talked to your doctor, they've confirmed that you have uh, blood clots. One of the things I want to mention, you can't believe everything everybody says to you all of the time. You can believe some of it some of the time, but not all of the time. And what I'm getting at here is your medical personnel may dispute you on whether you have a blood clot or not. If you think you really do, demand the right test. You know, insist, ask the hospitalist, which is a doctor assigned to that wing, that you want another Doppler run or maybe the first Doppler. I want you to be part of the medical team. Don't, don't be against them, but work with them. Let them understand your concerns, but take action if you need to take action. Uh, particularly with IV line, if you've got uh, deep vein thrombosis, as I did in the femoral and, and the femoral vein work trifurcates and basically the whole darn leg, uh, your legs are going to be swollen up and be extremely painful and they've got the IV fluid running into you. You may want to question them about whether you can shut that off. Uh, I just shut mine off. It, you will find that you will have extreme pain from the swelling of your legs. You'll be unable to walk more than a few yards. You'll be lucky to get to your hospital bathroom. Uh, again, before you go into the hospital, do some very quick uh, planning for supplies. One of the things I want to mention is if you can, either you or have a friend, get some compression stockings. Now, by compression stockings, uh, I would recommend if you have uh, upper leg clots, get the thigh high stocking. Get, it, get these in anything 30 millimeters or less in pressure because your legs are going to be so swollen in a few weeks, you're going to have to throw them away anyway. Do not get, as the uh, the person, the salesman at the medical supply store, he sold me these. They are absolutely what you do not want because your legs are going to be so swollen that when you try to go to the bathroom, you can't get these down. You're stuck, and you're really, uh, it's really a nightmare. If you have a blood clot in your calf, you want to get calf high stockings. Again, start with 30 millimeters or less. Now at the hospital, they're going to run a lot of tests on you, but in a week they're going to let you go. In the first week, you're going to be homebound. You're also looking at major life changes. Now what your doctors don't tell you, because they've never really been through this experience, they've just read about it, but if you do enough searching, you'll find that others will uh, agree that you, you'll be in for a one to two year recovery period, depending on what level of recovery you want to achieve. So I want you to be aware that this is very serious and you need to be thinking ahead all the time. Now, my next video clip, which I'm going to make shortly, I'm going to give you a lot of tips on what you can do to shorten that time period. I'm doing things that no doctor would approve of, and it's working. But for right now, I want you to understand the severity of the situation you're in. I've told you how to recognize the symptoms, and I've told you to use the doctor as a learning tool, see what he has to say, but don't necessarily buy into it as the last word. Your doctors are going to tell you, you know, just be very gentle, just hardly walk without jarring yourself or so forth. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to show you how I use massagers to really uh, cultivate that leg and really go after those blood clots. Uh, don't have any problem. But for now, I want you to be your own uh, self-appointed advocate. Be part of the recovery team that calls the shots because everybody else is just, you know, they're going to tell you what they think they know, but you're the one in the driver's seat and you're the one feeling the pain. I guess the, the last thing I want to uh, mention to you is that as you are uh, thinking about what you're going to be wearing at home, think in terms of getting not these, but these kind of uh, compression socks, and your time schedule is going to be sort of like this, at least mine was, the first week you're going to be laid up in bed. Uh, it's going to be a major pain just to get up and go to breakfast or dinner in your own home. Take your hydrocodones or your lower taps, whatever the hospital gives you, an hour before you 
get up and walk. That'll help with the pain. Don't be bashful. Take pain medicine. This is not going to be an easy trip for you. The second week, you're going to find you can maybe even start to walk around your own house once. Maybe walk around it outside. You're going to take baby steps, but you're going to make progress for a while. Uh, do as much as you can on your your days that you can. You're going to have bad days, but you're going to have worse days. So on your bad days, try to get as much done as you can. By your third week, you should be able to uh, consider being able to get into your car with great difficulty and maybe drive to a Kroger parking lot or something if it's not full and get out, walk around your car. That's about all you'll have the energy for and get back in and drive home. Expand the range of what you can do bit by bit. You're going to be uh, working piecemeal at this. Everything's going to be a struggle. But if you keep at it, you can, uh, you can achieve uh, whatever degree of success that you want. So I'm going to close for now. Uh, take deep vein clotting very seriously. And again, think in terms, if you're trying to decide whether you've got a clot or not, think in terms of, did I do anything that could have stressed that ligament that runs across here and impinged the femoral veins? Or if you have a, a superficial vein clot, you should be able to see and feel the vein uh, firmness and redness. So I've given you some things to look for. Hope to see you on my next video clip. That's all for now.